everyone. Um, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Miley and welcome to my channel. I've been doing DIYs for the last couple years. Um, I decided to do this video is because, or I want to let people know out there that they're not the only ones struggling because a lot of time we feel like we are, but we aren't. <sighs> Sorry guys, I don't know how to start this, but I guess I will start with how it all began uh, with my struggle. And um, I will just end it to where I am now and today, how I'm doing and stuff. Um, gosh, I hope this goes well. I don't know how to start this. But I really, really want to do this video just to get it out there, even for myself in the future or, you know, for anybody that needs it that think they're the only one in the world that's going through this stuff because they're not there's a lot of us out there I learned that anyways okay um about three years ago 2012 um gosh I'm already starting to cry <laughs> sorry guys 2012 March early March I found out I was pregnant and we were so happy that um, we were going to become parents because I've been wanting a baby for a long time and my husband said when we get our own house we will you know try to have a baby and so when we found out we were pregnant we were like two happy couple I was getting fabric sewing stuff getting ready for the baby and then by mid April after Easter um I um my stomach started hurting and it's just hard to dig back in the past guys but I am do better now but it's just hard to dig back dig back into the past <coughs> uh, anyways by mid April my stomach started hurting and um so we decided to go see a doctor first we went to the emergency room because my stomach hurt so bad and I started seeing a little bit of blood and stuff and I was kind of worried and the doctor told me that about this time the baby is about eight weeks old and the doctor said um the baby heartbeat stopped and um my heart just broke I felt like my life just shattered like I didn't know what to do I was like in denial I was oh sorry guys I was I was telling my husband I was like can you talk to the baby? Can you tell the baby that it's going to be okay? You know, everything's going to be fine and stuff. Even though after the doctor told me that, you know, the baby, her beat has basically stopped. And then we went to my doctor. We called my doctor and we went and my doctor said, you know, it will pass. And so by almost the end of April, I lost, I had a miscarriage. It, it was pretty hard. I feel like my life just stopped. Um, because I've been wanting a baby for a long time. Oh, of course, now I'm still not pregnant or have any baby, but it's just heartbreaking to know. Like, some of you guys probably go through it, you know what I'm talking about, but it's a feeling you can't explain unless you go through it. Anyways going on after that story so I had already lost my baby and my heart has already been broken I feel like someone just grabbed a knife stabbed my heart and I feel like my world just stopped I did not want to do anything I just wanted to stay home don't even want to go see friends and family or anything but my family came and visit me that summer I tried to make myself look happy I tried to you know enjoy the company and stuff but it was just it wasn't the same as before. I, if some of you guys know me, I am a bubbly person. I'm 
always happy, I am outgoing, I have a lot of energy that my husband always asks me, how do you, where did you get all that energy, you know, um, like, he can't even keep up with me, anyways, so, later that year, um, uh, right after Christmas, I remember it, December 28th, 2012, <gasps> as life can't get any harder, it did, um, I was at work one day, and I was in the back, changing a soda pop, and this big metal thing fell right on me, and I could not feel my leg. It went numb. I felt this tingly sensation and everything, and I was in so much pain, <sighs> and my brother was visiting me at the time, I, both of my brothers, and I got home. Um, my brother massaged me, so it felt a little bit better, but it didn't feel all the way better. But I thought, you know, it would just pass. I was like, oh, you know, because I have scoliosis and I have uh, back arthritis and stuff. So I was like, it would just pass. It will be fine. But a month later, it was still bothering me. I couldn't really walk. I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. I wasn't as energetic as I used to be, and I... I just felt, at this point in time, I just wanted to give up in life. 2013 was hard. It was just a hard year to go through. I just shut myself out from the world, from everybody. I didn't want people to feel sorry for me, but I was feeling sorry for myself. And that's what I should have done. <coughs> Because I was pretty mad when people were feeling sorry for me. Because I didn't want them to feel sorry for me. But I was feeling sorry for myself. Because I couldn't... Um, at the time, my husband and I were sleeping downstairs. And I couldn't even go downstairs anymore. It was heartbreaking. Because I had to um, sleep on the couch. It, I'm going to some really personal detail for me but I just wanted to share how personal it is for me so I don't know what to say it was hard when it was time to go to bed it was hard to know that I can't go to bed with my husband because I had to sleep on the couch because it was the most comfortable spot in the whole house for my back And I just wanted to give up. I told myself there is nothing else to live for in this world. I was so done. Oh, sorry guys. It's like I couldn't wear high heels anymore. I couldn't go down the stairs. And going to work was hard because people were uh, criticizing me. And I let it bother me. They're like, oh, she's so lazy, she's just using her back as an excuse so she wouldn't have to work. And it's like, you guys don't even understand the struggle I'm going through. <laughs> That's why I waited so long just to make this video, is because I was hoping to wait until I was ready. But I don't think I'm ever going to be ready to be talking about the past. Because, you know, every time you dig up, old wounds is going to hurt. Anyways. <coughs> So, it hurt. I did not even want to go to work anymore. So I finally got Wordsman Comp. And that was another battle and another struggle because I already have back arthritis. They didn't believe that I had a, what is it called? A contusion is where the inside of you, where your bone, because it, it hit my back and it hurt my hip. And when I went to the emergency room, um, the, the doctor came to me and the doctor was like, you know you're internally bleeding, right? Your, your hips are bruised. And I was like, are you serious? Yeah. And so, Warbens Comp sent me to a specialist like a month and a half later or two months later. And the bruise wasn't really there anymore. And of course, I wasn't really bleeding anymore at the time and stuff. And so they told me, they were like, you should be better by now. And this is like, um, by June, oh. I believe. It hurts so much to think that people think that you are a liar. 
you are a liar. And to which you know that you're not even lying because you go through all this pain and nobody you feel like nobody else is even going through this pain. They don't even know what you're feeling. And they're going to turn around and say you're lying. It just hurt a lot. They're like, um, it's probably not even the injury that's hurting anymore. It's just your back arthritis. So you need to, um, we're going to cut you off. So you need to get back to work. <sighs> and the final, ch the uh, financial situation was so hard, guys. So hard. And so I was stressing, you know, stressing about money, stressing about not having a job anymore. Just stressing about everything. And uh, I had this shingles. And guys, I do not wish the shingles on anybody because it hurt so much. So, so much. You, I, I thought my life couldn't get any worse. And it did. Oh, I'm already in June. But I want to go back a little bit in March. Yeah, it was in February that I had to see shingles. And then I said to my husband, um... Do you still want to go to Disneyland? Because we were planning to go to Disneyland for the last, the two years, since 2010, since we got married. And we've been planning to go to Disneyland. And I said to him, um, do we really want to go to Disneyland? We had to put it off because we found out we were pregnant. And then so we wanted to wait until the baby got older so we could go to Disneyland with the baby. But then that didn't happen. And so I lost my back later on that year. And he was like, yeah, we should still go. You know, we will work your back out, do your exercises like your PT told you, and we're going to figure this out, and we're going to go. <coughs> so I have booked everything already, and like I told you guys, by June, we were having money problem, my back wasn't getting any better, and I just wanted to give up. I told my husband, I was like, I'm just going to cancel this Disneyland trip. I do not even want to go anymore. I just want to give up. I just want to shut myself out from the world and not even do anything and he said no gosh this video is gonna be so long so he helped me walk every day every day every day and i said you know Disneyland is so big i don't think i can make it with the way my back is and everything i was so negative i was so negative to the point where i was like suicidal and they put me on these medication. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, but Larica. And that medicine messed with your head. I was going to say a bad word, but I'm not going to. It messed with your head worse. More than you already are. And it just put me into a suicidal state. Like, 